<sighs> Do you guys remember the times? Remember the times when E3 was on top of the world? Do you remember waking up in June saying E3 is here? Do you remember how excited you were when, when you sat in front of your TV, computer, or your cell phone watching this event, watching the conferences take place? Get, getting that giddy feeling inside to see what's new, what's, what's the next big thing, the next big game on the horizon. Remember that? Remember that feeling? That feeling is gone now. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy X here, and I'm back with another video. Man, this is a huge moment. I end of an era right here. This right here just... This is what I was afraid of. And... Lord behold, it have come true. I know this news came out a, a, a couple days ago and stuff. I was on my little break and stuff, just, just just to get my mind right and my thoughts and bam and stuff. They just dropped the news. E3 has been canceled. Canceled. And um, I'm so torn between it and it's nor is it good and bad, but it's kind of E3's fault at the end for how they fell from grace to heavens and they just fell, just plateaued like, and now it's starting to show the, the, the cracks of the either are starting to show and uh, I want to talk about it and stuff like that. So if you guys do enjoy today's video, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, make sure you out cut your so, 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 so much. Once again, guys, thank you for all your support, all, all, all my new subscribers, all your comments and feedback. My job is just to entertain you and stuff like that. And if I can make you laugh and smile in this crazy world we live in and stuff, then I'm doing my job. So uh, thank you for, from the bottom of my heart so much. You guys are the reason why I keep doing this, seeing all your comments, likes, hell, even dislikes and stuff like that keeps me motivated to just to know that someone's watching my videos uh out there and stuff like that and if it can brighten up your day well then my job is done so get into this e3 news uh damn like so i'm gonna start off the part of me that are at tour so there's two halves of me there's one half that do not care about it because e3 has literally been a shambled mess since like the last e3 i enjoyed was like 2016 and that's when sony was still there and but out of that it just been a shamble mess just a bunch of advertisers and stuff you know all they really focus on is all that political stuff and the advertising and stuff like that and i said it if you guys can go back and watch my old e3 rent from last year and stuff when when they did that fucking zoom call meeting that was like the final straw and stuff and there is a time and a place for everything but when you start bringing that social movements politics all that into a gaming showcase that's where your showcase is going to just plateau and stuff that's where it's going to fall apart because you lose e3 you e3 e3 you lose what made you so special. You are all about just the games, the showcase, to see what's up and coming. News. I can remember so many memories of E3 that I loved, that just not there no more. That excitement's not there no more. And on top of that, companies have pulled out. The biggest one is Sony, has stopped going to E3 altogether. Uh, when they first said they're not going to E3, it was a shock to the gaming we're like, what the hell? So then kind of come to E3. The other companies, the Nintendo, that everybody started to follow suit. And I think that's what really scared E3. That's what really shook them and said, 
We're losing! We're losing our developers and our publishers and stuff. They don't want to come to our showcase. And bam. <laughs> and now it's starting to show because all these other companies said, hmm, we can get the same we, 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 we can get the same reactions, but not pay E3 and save us money. Hmm. And since his hey, what you want about the the Sony states of plays, which I'm not a fan to say it play, but say what you want about it. Sony's showcases have been successful for the past two years, probably even three years and stuff. But they've been so successful. They've been dropping bombshells, new reveals. Hell, last year we got Spider-Man 2 announcement. We got a new a Wolverine, a, a Wolverine, uh, uh, Simon's making a new a Wolverine game. So like that they, these companies have shown that they don't need E3 to create hype. Even though we love E3 because it's just tradition. It's, it, it comes on the bottom line that it's just tradi tradition and stuff. But these companies have shown that they don't need E3 to be successful. They can have the little game showcases and generate just as much hype as if they were in E3 and stuff. And I think that's where E3 and took the bullet and now it's feeling the hurt and stuff from that when Sony and you know all these other companies are doing you know their own showcases of course my, my Microsoft is still there and stuff which is like the last big you know presence there because if, if Microsoft would lead to E3 would have been e, E3 is pretty much done and stuff like that but you know the other half of me is sad uh it's just it's just it is hard to see because especially if now if you're a new if, you, if you're a new gamer and you didn't grow with e3 and stuff like that then you won't feel this i'm talking right now i'm talking to my og gamers the one that grew up in my time the one that grew up with e3 i'm talking to you this is directly to you now how do you feel about E3 being canceled? How does it feel to see E3 in this state? Because I know it hurts. I remember the memories of E3. E3 was like Christmas for gamers in the summer. Because we know the summertime is <coughs> dry as hell. But E3 was one of those events that literally gave us hope. Even though it was, it was the beginning of the summer, but it was just something to look forward to. I remember being in school. And E3 was around the corner. And I'm like, oh my god, summer break is about to come around. E3 is about to drop and stuff. And all my friends would, ju we would just talk about what could be there, what could be, and stuff like that. You know, hell, I mean, I should have been doing a, a YouTube channel way back when. But that defeats the purpose. We was all talking about what could be there, what, like, what like what could be there and stuff like that and that's the fun of that was the fun about e3 not knowing and tune in to see these you know these showcases of these press conferences and these big giant announcements it made you excited it made you hype and stuff like that it it just it was something to look forward to and e3 got it they didn't they, 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 they didn't put no politics in their showcase as the or, or political stuff you know no no they didn't put a whole bunch of advertisements and stuff or advertisers in their show stuff like that back in the day it was just about the press conference and the games and we even got big memories such as new console hardware reveals get games that literally you know, define the decade reveals. Every those big moments were shown at E3 and stuff. So E3 has a lot of history, and if you cared about it back then, stuff like that, you st we st I still care about. It, but it just hurts to see the, one of the biggest game showcases that were, was on the fucking planet has plummeted so low and has changed their structure of their their show so bad that it just damaged the reputation now before everybody used to love e3 now everybody just hates on it and clowns on it and stuff saying oh it's all washed up there's no point because sony has this microsoft has this everybody has this and stuff like that we don't we don't need e3 number because every company has their own showcases so we don't need e3 number. and it's like 
put some respect on E3's name because E3 was that showcase when we didn't have no other showcases and stuff. But again, the times that we live in, the world that we live in has changed and stuff. And what you could do, you can't do no more and stuff because either if you don't agree with someone's opinion, they either cancel you or they just, or, or, or they get up in arms and stuff and start, and start bashing you and stuff. So, and I feel like E3 has done that and such. So the E3 has tried to, in the last few years, tried to appeal, like please all the, the, the different types of people, either gamers and non-gamers and stuff. And that was literally, that was their little final in the coffin and stuff. When they tried to bounce back and forth, say, we're a game showcase. Oh, 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 oh but we, oh, oh, oh but we should, oh, 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 but we're a showcase for, you know, uh, 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 political discussions and social movements and stuff like that. No, E3, no, you're not that. You are a gaming showcase, conferences, reveals stuff. That's where you were. Not and stuff like that. And I, I, I said I, I support all the movements and stuff and stuff. But at the end of the day, there, there was a time and a place for that. And last year, what I watched was not and stuff. Once you start bringing that into your showcase, Jeff Keely, I'm talking to you because I'll get to you to in, in just a second. It just it diminished what made E3 E3 was about to get. It takes away from the games and stuff, and why people tune in for E3. No one wants to hear. No one wants to. No one wants to hear about the LGBTQ community. No one wants to hear about the SJW community. No one wants to hear about that and stuff like that. You have all. You have so many different talk shows and places like that that you could talk about those topics, but you decided to talk about the topics in the video game showcase where. Where it's supposed to be reveals, talking about upcoming games, showing up upcoming games, and talking about it. But besides, you 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 leaned into heavily into that, and that is what hurts, and that's what hurts you. Three, that's what hurt you so much because, like it or not, people don't like to hear about those topics in their video game showcase. They tune in for this show to see what games and stuff are coming out or announcements or stuff. But then when you go on and on talking about, have huge segments talking about these social movements, these, uh, these people, the people like, 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 like that, like diversity, all these stuff, which I support, but it's not the right time to talk about it. It's not, it's not a place to talk about it and stuff. You know, you can, you, you can have a separate event talk about that and those people that are interested in that can go to that event and talk about it but in a major gaming event like this where it's where they were known all about showing the games and announcements and stuff that's where it should have been the stuff they should have kept that stuff separate and focus on the games and stuff and you know, I, I'm just I'm I'm, I'm 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 so sad. So I just got done reading over this article. So I'm trying I'm trying not I'm trying, not, I'm trying not, not to make this video too long, but I, I just got done reading uh, um done with this article and stuff. And they said that uh, E3 has officially been canceled. You know, no, uh, right here it says uh, the faith. Uh, there has been growing concerns about the faith of E3 over the last few years. Yes, there has. People thought, oh, it was the pandemic. The pandemic is the reason why E3 wasn't on. No, did E3, E3, if you've been watching E3, has has been on a decline in the last few years. And I've seen it. I think once Sony left, that's that was that was the start. That sent the message to say E3 is falling apart. And there was, and, and there was so much, you know, and, and there was so much, you know, backlash with E3 and controversies and stuff like that, regarding payment, money issues and stuff, uh, uh, financial uh, uh, struggles and stuff. So E3 has been in, in hot water for a long time, not just because of COVID and stuff, uh, but of course the, the pandemic did play a part in it. But uh, yeah, and here we are. Our boy Jeff Keeley. Now Jeff Keeley, no shade to you, no shade to you, stuff like that. J 
Jadakis, he seems like a real cool person and stuff. But when it comes to his shows, Jeff, your priori your priorities is in the wrong field, my friend. It's in the wrong field. You focus on so much just to, to, to please your advertisers and sponsorships that you forget about why you do it. Now, your heart might be in the right place about, you know, games and, and gaming games and spotlights, but what I saw from the Game Awards last year, and I did a whole video about it, that's pathetic. That wasn't about games or, 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 or as you call, the biggest night for, uh, uh, for gaming. No. That was the big knife to, to to please your investors, to please your your advertisers. Cause the way, hold on for a second. I, I'm gonna drink of water. The way that you, the way that you, was speed reading through uh, through uh, uh, through the, the the nominees, through the game awards. Just show, but then you have, but then you have the audacity to have a f a, a full long commercial length advertisement about Sh Ray Shadow Legends, but you can't get that time to 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 the developers that were sitting in stage and to talk about their games. You will rush them off the stage. You 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 get them like thirty seconds to talk on stage. Either they win a, a reward, and then oh, on to the next one. Okay, this comes here from from my our sponsors, Core's Hair, and so in their new keyboard. Come on, Jeff. Come on, you you even had uh you even had a sponsorship that kept playing. Uh, what was it? I was AT and T or Verizon. Verizon. Oh, this shows powered by Verizon 5G network. Sign up today. Like really. Cell phone carriers now. Now we're advertising every single moment to shove it in your face. That's why your priorities lie, and that's why the game wars for me too is falling off. Because again, these shows are starting just to to make the investors, advertisers happy, but in, in, but then the games and the developers of those games are suffering because they feel like they're the hardware's not getting showcased. You 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 you're not talking about the games. You just talk about oh. Oh, oh! So they they had they had what they had uh 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 the Paramount Plus uh circuit services uh, when it was they were advertising that in the Game Awards, which I'll talk about Paramount Paramount Plus. I'm gonna talk about you because you you fucked up Halo, but that's for another video. That's for another video. Okay, but but moving on and stuff. So, so Summer Game Fest. So I watched the last, uh, the last year's uh, Summer Game Fest and stuff, and uh, it's it's okay. Like, like I said, I don't know how his shows is gonna be now because of the the, the, the on, 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 on the Game Awards, and that game was three hours long. Like his his shows were end game length and stuff like that, but of course he said that we're excited to see uh, Summer Game Fest to return June uh, with a say event with say of events uh, the, and they're doing that live uh, a kill live show. I might just watch the live show and stuff like that because Summer Game Fest is stretched out to like I think like June to July, probably August and stuff like that. Uh, so. So I'm not sure what is that gonna be, or, or, or is he gonna change it to, you know, just in June and stuff like that. So, so, so the whole month of June is gonna be just an announcement and stuff like that. But again, it's like when E3 is canceled, Jeff is literally like, oh, hey, we still got my show, we still got my show. You know the the three hour show, you know the three hour shows that the actual the. the the, the I show 90% of advertisements, but only like 10% of games. Yes, that's my show. So I don't know what's going to be here. Like, like I said, I'm not excited for the Summer Game Fest and stuff because I know his Jeff K. Jeff Keighley, Jeff Keighley as a person is cool, but his shows is, is, is not and stuff like that. It's just it's just a bunch of filler and, and commercials. But again, so I'm not excited about the Summer Game Fest, but of course, it's stuff we E3 out the picture. This and this is gonna be our main showcase, probably to look forward to for announcements. So 
whether we like it or not, we're all going to probably tune in to watch this. Did that that's just how it goes up like that when one major event gets canceled, another one pops up. Where else where else are we going to go for our news and announcements and stuff like that? The showcase and stuff. So, yes, I will be tuning into that. I will, I will be watching it and stuff and you know, I'm not excited for it, but I I, I, I just want to see what's there and stuff. But uh but okay, so as I so as I as I wrap, as I wrap this up and get to the end of the video, um, I just want to know your guys' feedback on E3 being canceled and stuff. Do you care about it and stuff? Are you a long time E3 watcher and you grew up with it and, and, and does it hurt you or bother you in any way seeing, you know, this once goat tier event just, just crash landed and stuff into nothing and stuff? You know, how does that make you feel and stuff, you know, about the fate? Of E3. Now they did say that E3 is coming back next year, but I, I just don't know and stuff. I don't know what they could do to bring E3 back, because again, a lot of companies have shown that they don't need E3 to build up hype and momentum because Sony has proved it uh, uh, with the showcase. Nintendo has proved it with their Nintendo Direct. Hell, even Xbox has had their su successful showcases. So it's like, really, what could bring E3 back and stuff, you know, to the glory days? I'm not sure nothing. I'm not sure nothing can bring it back because I guess time has changed, the world has changed, people has changed and stuff. And I don't know. I would love to see a combat, but I don't know what they could do and stuff like that. If you guys have any ideas, just, 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 let, me know, just let me know down below. And uh, yeah, so if you guys, did you enjoy today's video? Make sure you smash the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel. Make sure you be a channel so, 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 so much. Stay tuned for my other videos, guys. And until next time, stay safe. Take it easy. Peace.